This one took a while, but say you've got a single image of your character and all you want to do is have them feature in various animated escapades. Easy enough, right? Just train a Laura and you're away. Uh, hold on, because you've only got the one image and that makes for a rather pants dataset. It took me a while to make sure this process works, but hopefully by following these steps, you can get a decent dataset and thus a consistent character in any video you like. You should already be familiar with and have WAN video up and running like I have here in Comfy UI, along with the actual training stuff. The main focus here is on the data set. If you need additional information on those areas, do check out my previous videos linked in this video's description. Step one then is pretty simple. Use the remade AI Rotate LoRa and you'll have your first data set to train with. Yes, I'm following my own tip from last week's video. Here you can see I've got the image to video workflow with the Rotate LoRa from that tutorial. This time, however, instead of a video, each individual frame is being saved with Comfy's save image node. I suggest putting everything into its own directory like I've done here, as you'll find it much easier to have all the images in one place. 81 frames is a good start for your data set, so do your spin and you've got your very first one. Even if you've never made a data set before, then don't worry, it's the first step in training, but also the most important one. Now, the thing with the Rotate LoRa is that it keeps the background consistent. And the thing with LoRa's is they learn features um, such as consistent backgrounds. I do want a consistent character, including his outfit, but I don't want the same black background each time. We could start by changing this background color in each frame, but instead of doing that, let's just see what happens if we train, well, right away. These are simply sample outputs from a test run, but they are good enough to show what's going on here. At just 500 steps, you can see our hero is actually almost sort of there. There's a little bit of his outfit and everything. At 1000 steps, it should be getting better, but uh, well, he seems to have a tail and the dragon has a bit of a rodent face. 1500 steps now and hey, look, the sky turned black. Uh, mm, rip sunlight. And finally, at 2000 steps, the character is nicely consistent. However, look at that black background and all the transfer onto the dragon. One tip here then is to ensure you have some varied backgrounds because the backgrounds you pick will indeed impact the Laura. For example, you could put him in as a cartoon character, but have the world around him being realistic. Which brings me to another point. In my previous training videos, people would ask, what about a style Laura or a whatever thingy Laura? Um, well, how about if I say every Laura? is a style Laura, a character Laura, and an object Laura all in one. A character Laura will inevitably capture stylistic elements, and a style Laura will inherently incorporate any object or character traits. Vibe coding? No, we're doing vibe Lauras here. A Laura will distill the very essence of your data set, whatever that may be. In our case here, a consistent character. As we saw, 2000 steps looked a bit dark in those test samples. What you can do for this initial LoRa is just do a quick bit of training. I've been using AI Toolkit, but whichever trainer you are using should have options similar to these. The first thing to look at is using a lower rank. The default here was 32, so I dropped that down to 16 and the linear alpha down to 8. It will vary a bit depending on the features in your data set, but we were definitely overfitting, so anything lower than those defaults should help a bit. Our data set is still also far from optimal, so an increase in the dropout rate may help. I went up to 0.1 to mix things up a bit, though I am kind of assuming here that it's unloading the text encoder. Dropout will therefore use an empty instead of a trigger word sometimes. Lowering the learning rate should help with the training as well, and this is just a slight drop. And finally, we saw it learns really fast with that black being overpowering at 1500 steps, so starting with a mere 500 is absolutely fine. Over to Comfy now for some example generations with the Step 1 LoRa. Here is the prompt, then a scene with two characters, 
One should be a thin human woman wearing a red and white tracksuit, and the other one should be our rodent hero. Uh, in the background there, we've got a housing estate. Are your vibes in sync? What do you think this is going to generate? Ah, wow, the vibes are definitely a cartoon style to start with. I didn't mention that in the prompt, but it's inferred it from the character. With regards to what he looks like, yes, that's very close. It hasn't quite got his arms the right colour, but otherwise I'd say that's good enough for me. The black background, that's gone. It's just a case of having to prompt it away. And his running partner, oh, oh dear. She has got problems. It's meant to be a red and white tracksuit, but instead she's taken many features from our character still. As a slight aside, another tip is to use a special node up here. This is an extra thing. You can pop in before the T-cache or wherever you want in your model flow there. Skip layer guidance DIT. Now this is mostly the defaults with the double and single layers being 789, but what I did change was the start percentage, which is now 0.2, and the end percent, which is now one. If you're wondering what things look like if you don't have that node, well, let's take a look. Here then is the exact same thing, but I've just disabled the node. And as you can see, it's still got our character, but um, yeah, I don't think the quality is quite there. So you can get a much better image using that skip node. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. How can you stop that sort of feature transfer and fix small issues with your character's consistency as well? Giving your character a more detailed description can help to fix things like that arm color. Here in this example, you can see the prompt is a lot more detailed. I've also tried to describe the other character more thoroughly as well. Plus up here, you can change the shift values too. A lower shift value, such as between 1.25 and 2.5 can help because, well, things don't change as much. The result this time is sort of better in the, the character looks fine, but his running partner is a rodent and she's meant to be human. In order to fix this, we need more than just a quick character spin. We need a more varied data set. Though easy, just changing the background color in those images isn't enough. What it really needs is information about your character's relative size, what things in the world should look like, stuff like that. At the moment, every belt is potentially going to be like his belt and they're all gonna have the muscles and they're all gonna have the same face. But hold on. if. If everyone looks like your character, it seems you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You need to augment your data set, but it's difficult to create a consistent character in the first place without having this Laura you've trained for, and we've only started with a single image. If you're an artist, there's absolutely no problem here because you can simply draw your character in different scenarios and interacting with others. As a nerd though, the obvious answer is to spend weeks and weeks testing loads of different random configurations to find out how everything works. You could start by manually augmenting your data set. Even drawing a stick figure next to your character can help, for example. The downside here is that not only do you have to then load another program, but you may have to draw something. Obviously, we want to try and avoid that where possible as you could end up actually learning how to draw digital art. If only there was something with a really heavy bias in every single model I've ever tried. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yes, it's called the Mona Lisa, probably the most famous painting in the world. Are you vibing yet? Because even if everybody else has a rodent face, the Mona Lisa should be the Mona Lisa. Here's one example of a prompt that should help to cut through those weights and biases. We've got our rodent hero as normal, but then in there, we've got a painting of the Mona Lisa. I've also mentioned the artist Leonardo da Vinci as well, just to make sure it really knows what's going on. Now, in a single new image, we've got so much more information we can give to our Laura during its training. Now, it may take a few goes to get one that's just right, but you should end up with your character in a novel pose. Here he's sitting on the sofa holding his mobile phone. And there in the background, we've got the Mona Lisa. So that's a slightly different face and she's got a different outfit and she's got hands in there as well. Obviously, it's still got a cartoon style, but okay, we've got 
a start to the augmentation of our data set. This is definitely the most difficult stage in all of this, as you now need to generate a number of context images. Other extremely well-known people, places, objects, and paintings can work such as here with Girl with a Pearl Earring. Step two then is to generate a few of these context images, aiming for them to be at least 10% of your data set. Although 10% is a rough minimum, and given our data set is currently just black context images, uh, I would suggest starting out with 30%. Eventually, you'll have a bunch of new context images, meaning it's time to pick only the very best for your new data set. I find it's good to make a new directory for each one and then copy in only the images you really want. If you make a new directory each time, you'll have the previous ones to look back at and you can see what worked and what didn't. I know I get easily confused. When building your data set, try to strike a balance. For example, if you've got more images of your character looking to the right, then when you do your generations later on, most of the time your character's going to be looking to the right. You'll probably want to skip a few of the images from your original spin. I used every other frame here, plus there are a few frames that just weren't as good as the rest. For the total data set size, this time I ended up with 51 images, 10 of which were these context ones. You may even recognize hints of some of the people. For example, I found Sherlock Holmes and other famous characters worked really well too. A sneaky way to have more than one face in the image each time is to do like I've done here and put a portrait in the background as well. Obviously not too many times though, otherwise that will pick up a bias. For the second Laura, I changed the training parameters again, putting both of these ranks to 16. We've got some context images in there now, so the caption dropout rate I just changed back to the default. Still training on 500 steps, and the learning rate again just a little bit lower. As a side note, the only difference between training a WAN character Laura and a Flux one is you copy and run a different configuration file. Also, for 14b, it's just a trigger word which is supported during training, so any captions will only have a tiny impact. It's mostly trigger word powered. Despite what it says in the configuration file, short videos such as MP4s are now also supported should you wish to do a motion instead of a character. The only downside of AI Toolkit doing everything for you is that it will also download more files, so wave goodbye to even more disk space. There are other options for training. AI Toolkit isn't the only one. You've also got Diffusion Pipeline or Masubi Trainer. They have more complicated options to enable the use of model files you may already have locally for comfy UI and fun things like that. With regards to training time on a 3090, that was just 30 minutes for me doing the 500 steps. The trigger itself is also fairly important. I try to keep it short and unique, copying their example using both numbers and letters. Right, time to have a look at what our updated Laura does and if the issues are solved, now we have some context images in there too. Remember our rodent running partner? This time I'm still using a fairly long prompt to describe each of the characters, but the result is much better. She's even got her own face and outfit, and it's been able to follow the prompts a lot better too, all thanks to the improved dataset. But hold on, because we don't have to just stick with static images. We are only doing these to test the vibe, man. All you have to do is up the number of frames going from 1 to 81 in this case. And now we've got our consistent character running along the road with his running partner. In summary then, your dataset for a consistent character should be without duplicates, balanced, but also varied. It should include not only your solo character in different actions, poses, positions, distances, and expressions, but also interacting with others, and occasionally even partially obscured, such as hiding behind a rock. With an iterative dataset approach and the Mona Lisa trick, even starting from a single image, you can build a dataset just using WAN, and then bring your character to life. 
Each data set you produce should now be of better and better quality. If more complex characters are needed, you may need to increase the rank for training. And with a very good data set, you may also be able to train it for a bit longer. But you can see that by following the vibes. As a bonus, Laura's trained on text to video will work on image to video as well. And the more you make, the more you'll find yourself getting into the groove of the vibe, Laura, dude, radical. The vibes I was getting from my character, for example, was I need more things in there like him lifting up a bus or leaping a building in a single bound or maybe sort of who framed Roger Rabbit style mixing reality with cartoons. There's so many different options. Being fairly new, I've only been testing this WAN thing for a couple of weeks now, so do feel free to share your own training or dataset tips and tricks down in the comments. Overall, I think the quality of the videos we can generate with our own characters on our own computers at home is well, amazing, especially as when I started computing, being able to have more than 16 colors in an image was cool. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day showing us AI in a really British way.